guys! So today I'm going to be going through how to get an A slash A star in math for GCSE 91 maths. I got seven, which I believe is an A, and considering I was predicted a four the whole year. These techniques must have done something. This is so highly requested after my GCSE results video. Press the I if you want to see that. If you want to see any other videos like how I revised for English or Spanish language, everything like that, then comment down below and give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to stop what you're doing and press that red subscribe button and turn on post notifications. And yeah, let's get on with the video. First things first, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Me and maths had a bit of a toxic relationship. I hate maths, let me just set that straight. I always will, I always have. I don't see the point in studying it to the extent that we did. Like I get like learning the basics because it is important to have like a rough like maths knowledge, but learning like Pythagoras theorem, like you're asking for too much at this point, like I'm never gonna use that again. And if people like, want to use that sort of maths in their life, then they can choose to do that. But you shouldn't force the whole of England to do that. Thank you very much. A to GCSEs, I would dread maths lessons because I was the worst in my class. Like if you're in my class and you're watching this, it was just like a known thing that I was the worst. And I was sat next to the cleverest boy for like two years because the teacher thought it would help me, which it actually really, really did. Like I'm pretty sure he's the only reason I passed. Like he was so good at explaining stuff during my mental breakdowns. Um, the pressure that they put onto us was horrible. And I was also putting so much pressure on myself because I was like, if I don't pass this, I'm gonna have to do it for another year. And I couldn't think of anything worse than revising for maths again. The first thing I did to revise for my maths GCSE, this isn't a necessity, but honestly it helped me so much. And if you can find the money to do this, then I really, really recommend it. And it was getting maths tutoring outside of school because the thing is, my maths teacher, I don't want to blame it on him, but he was really, really not good for like a solid amount of time. Problem was the teacher just expected everybody to already know everything because everybody in my class was so clever and me and Flo were just there like, right, this is a problem. <laughs> got a tutor and that was so, so, so helpful. I'd bring um, past papers, we'd go through that, we'd go through all the topics on the checklists because when you get a textbook in maths, it usually has like all of the topics listed. If you go through them, tick them off with your tutor and you can just go through the pages. Literally just like practice questions or bring stuff in from class I didn't understand and she'd have like worksheets and everything. So honestly, it helped so much. So yeah, I had that once a week. I also went to maths club. I'm pretty sure near the exams, I went to every single maths club. I think I went to like three when it was coming up to the exams. Like I just went to every single one. Don't even care if my name was on the register. I was there, my cheese baguette. So yeah, and you could just talk to the teachers one on one there. So that is an alternative. If you don't want to get a maths tutor outside of school, you can just literally go to your teacher and be like, please explain this to me. I need help. Or you could ask an older sibling or see if your friends have an older sibling that could tutor you for less. Honestly, there's so many people out there that will be willing to help you know how it feels to want to never see a number again. Like, it's horrible. I get the pain. Right now, I don't know my times tables. I didn't know them during my GCSEs, and I don't think I ever will. I think I just have a problem with numbers. Like, they just don't go in my head. Like, if you know me, you know that I don't remember birthdays. I don't remember times. Being in school from year 7 to 11, in year 11, I still couldn't remember, like, the times of, like, break and lunch. I it won't go in my brain. See, so the second thing I'm going to talk about is... Past papers and practice questions. These are the most important things ever. They're really, really, really helpful. Obviously learn the material first and then do the practice questions in the past papers and past papers from previous years. So when you actually go into this exam, you'll find it a breeze because they're really easy compared to this one. My maths is insane. It's basically this lady that like talks you through a topic. So say you want to study um, integers. Um, you type in integers, she'll have a video going through a bunch of practice questions on it and then you can print off a worksheet and mark that and go through it and she just explains it really really simply. Your school doesn't have access to that, I think you need like a subscription, then there's like YouTube videos that you can watch. I think there's this one lady that does like science videos or something. I watched her for maths, she was really really good, I'll link all of these things down below night before the exam I remember Joe sent me this link to like a past paper basically what they did they made like an electronical mass paper of stuff that they predicted to be in the exam it was really really helpful and it like marked along the way and told you the grade that you would get if you answered like that in your exam my fourth tip is just the thing that changed everything for me so my brain works really well with flashcards I don't know if you saw in my clearing out my wardrobe or something it was a vlog that I did like spring cleaning 
Um, my flashcards, a bit too many, um, but I mean they helped me pass my exam, so. Just a few that I've kept um, to give to Izzy. I literally had to just get rid of them all though because they took up so much space. A massive chunk of these little sort of like cards. They're like really hard. These are from Amazon. I wrote a question. On the back I had the answer to that and I would go through them on the way to school. And what I did with flashcards, this is how they work for me, is I'd have a big chunk of them and I'd go through them. So I'd have sections in my chunk, if that makes sense, so like dividers. And when I get it right, I put it to the back of the first divider. And if I get it right again, I can go back further back and then you end up having the ones at the front that you don't know as well, so you can go over them more, but you still do the other ones, but like not as often. Okay, then I have these flashcards here, which are a bit bigger, and these are like paper ones, which you can get from WH Smiths. So I have the the theorem on one side, and then the, like, the exam. I don't really know. I have a few example questions with the answers on the back. So I have this, I don't know what that is, but like I explained it on the back. I know it looks a bit too much to have on a flashcard, but it worked for me. Now this is where the game changes. Okay, so I, I was on cold white maths because I'm pretty sure, I don't really remember what it was, but I think it was just a site that had like loads of practice questions. I was doing my thing, I was on cold white maths, doing my maths, and then I came across this ad for the flashcards and my life changed. It okay, so there are these flashcards, very pretty, very colorful. This is the card on the front. I literally have this for like every topic in maths. Like I would use this as your checklist. Like if you've gone through all of these, you'll be fine for your exam. It has really easy stuff and really, really hard stuff. It literally, with these, I managed to like attempt one of the last page questions, which at the beginning of the year before I got these, I never would have even looked at. So on the back, this is where the game changes. I've said that so many times in like the space of two minutes. It has three QR codes. And basically if you download an app called QR scanner, you can basically scan these in and um, you'll get a video explaining inverse functions. If you then scan this in, you get and you get digital like exam questions. I think you literally get like 30 questions on inverse functions. And then you scan it, this one here and you get answers for the sheet. Like how amazing is that? Like everything you need to know on one card. Like if I recommend one thing from this video, get this. I would just take these to the way to school, I would take these into lessons like when we were doing revision and I would literally look at the front of the card, get my head around it, watch the video, do the exam questions, mark them, I can see that. And then obviously you have like all the stuff on the back, parallel lines. And then the last thing I had for maths, I had a folder with organizers in them for different topics and I had um, sheets like this, uh, sheets here that I kept for explanations for stuff and like um, these sorts of things, like plastic wallet folders, and I wrote down a bunch of equations and example questions in like bright highlighter colors, and I took that in before my exam as well, um, on the way to school and stuff. And yeah, that is all I have to say for this video. That is how I revised my maths GCSE and managed to go from a four to a seven. I hope this was useful, and if you do wanna see me talk over any other subjects I did for my GCSEs, then comment that down below. Give this video a thumbs up, make sure to press that red subscribe button and turn on post notifications. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Oh baby, I love your